Hello. If there is no creator God, when did it, life, universe, all start? Or has it always been? Mr. Powell asked this question one year ago. I'm answering now. So, do you guys understand what is his question is? I think there is some imprecise. The creator God. If there's no creator God. Then the question comes, when? The time, no? When did it start? I mean, if it, it is much easier if there is a one creator God and he created it. The universe, life. So it's easy. So I think this question seems like a, some like a one Christian believer asking the question to Buddhists who don't believe, like a, like a the creator, you know, because the Buddhist, we always say everything is law of karma, the cause and effect. It's not like a, whatever you are seeing and experiencing in your world is you are the creator, no one else responsible for your suffering, your happiness, your life. It's you are the creator of your life, your world, your universe. So, that is the kind of Buddhist point of view. But the Paul asks this question regarding the, yeah, the life and universal, no universe. When did it when did it start? Or he, he say another, he, he emphasized, or oh, it has been always been there, like it never started. Mr. Paul and all of you, I wanted to really say something here. Because I also had this question before when I was young. Not only this, I have a many, many countless questions running in my brain, you know, when I was young, very, very young. But now, I don't ask this kind of question. Do you know why? Later I realize, as a spiritual practitioner, what is important question and what is not important question. Do, do, do you understand what I mean? See, I, I, let, me, let me explain you. When the Buddha, Shakyamuni, when he, he was became a Buddha 2,600 years ago under the Bodhi tree, you know, enlightenment. After that, so he went to Varanasi where he gave a first teaching, the sermon. So his first teaching is what do you call the essence of his realization the Four Noble Truth. Suffering is truth. The cause of suffering is truth. End of suffering, the Nirvana is truth. Path to Nirvana is truth. So I think that's simple. See, that is the, what do you call? Four foundation of Buddhism, the all the Buddhist teaching is to that, that this is the four foundation. So what Buddha Shakyamuni he really tried to tell us two thousand six hundred years ago. See the suffering, you, I, 
everyone. The, all the sentient beings are suffering. Some suffering are gross suffering, strong suffering. Some are subtle, some are very subtle. Some are physical, some are mental, some are emotional. But all the sentient beings are suffering. So, what he really tried to do is, he said the suffering is there, and the, all the sentient beings, we all want happiness. We all want happiness. But we always think the cause of suffering is outside. We always believe the cause of happiness is outside. Right? So we are looking outside the cause of happiness and cause of suffering. So Buddha found the cause of suffering is not outside. It's inside. So he found the cause of suffering is the three poison. Ignorance means not knowing who you really are or not knowing the truth. And then the attachment and then the aversion, the anger. No? So this three poison is the cause of the suffering. So the cause of suffering is inside us. So now, and even the like a root cause of the suffering is Nothing but not knowing the truth, who you really are, the nature of mind, the Buddha nature, the enlightened state. So that's why we think we are this and that and that and that. And that's a, we call it ego. That's the cause of suffering. So now the end of suffering is also truth because once you realize the root cause of the suffering and then you uproot the root cause of suffering, the suffering is end forever. So there is a path, you know, that the path is true, the method, there is a method to how to uproot the root cause of suffering. So these are the four noble truths. So Buddha was more interested in personal, uh, what do you call the the individuals like are solving the real problem. Are you getting my point, uh, Paul and all of the listener? You know, d d please follow me, which is very important here. See, let me give you an example. Let's say now you have a, you know, you have a problem at your home, let's say. Uh, your family, your maybe parents, your, your sisters, difficult to pay the rent. Not enough money to eat the food. I, do you understand what I mean? And then there's no enough money to pay the bills, the education fee, and so on and so forth. Now that is the real problem. But now you are, you are just sitting there and looking at the sky and, and asking, Like, a, when did the universal start? I, are you getting my point? Did, did, is it making sense? See, it will not going to solve your problem. The real problem that you are facing right now. The problem of not enough to eat. The problem of to not able to pay the bills. The problem of... Are, are you getting my point? So, the Buddha was so much emphasizing, he said, like, uh, see, who created the world, who created the life, who created the universal, that is not the important question. That will not, let's say, okay, let's say we, we say, okay, uh, he created the, the uh, universal, or she created the universal, or we don't know who created the universal. Do you think that will solve your individual suffering? Will, will, will it be reduce your suffering? Will you, will you become a better human being? No. Will you be enlightened? Let's say you got the answer. So what?
maybe there is a curiosity which is totally fine. But my point here is, Buddha was not really interested on this kind of questions. He was a very practical guy. He always emphasized, is that related to your life? Will it going to reduce your suffering, your family's suffering? Will it going to solve your inner emotional whatever problems? If not, don't waste your time. So that's 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 like a how I function nowadays. And I really before I used to I thought like I'm a philosopher, I have to ask big question. But now I, I'm really grounded. I ask practical question. I try to really follow the Buddha. Four noble truth. Suffering is truth, cause of suffering is truth. Let's and let's end the suffering. What are the methods? What are the tools? What should I do? Meditate? Oh, should I be nice? You have to be compassionate? Should I? So that's the more practical question we have to go to solve the real problem. But just to satisfy Mr. Paul, you know, your question, that the life and universe, the question, when did it start? It started here. Everything is started in here, in your mind. Your life, your universe, you are the creator. My life, my universal, I am the creator. Which means that my mind is creating that. So now, this is so important, when I, when this time when I say I, do you know I am pointing to which I? I am pointing to the mind, and especially dualistic mind. The dualistic mind is the creator of the life of the universe. Because see, each sentient beings, each one of you and each one of me, so I am, whatever I am experiencing, seeing everything, I am creating that from my mind. And whatever you are seeing, you are experiencing, you are the creator of that universe, of that life. Are you getting my point? Now, and when I say you, I'm talking about the dualistic mind. So that now, real real cause of this life in the universe so is nothing but the dualistic mind. When did it start? It started as soon as mind separate. And the, when the mind becomes a separate, the subjective I and objective life, objective universal, objective you. So then whole thing began. It's a very personal, it's a very individual journey. So, your mind is the creator of life in the universal. That is my answer for you. If you wanted to go deeper, I wanted to say, there wasn't any started point. And there will be no any end point. What does that mean? In the truth, let's say in the nature of mind, in the state of non-duality, in the state of non-duality, there's no separation. If there's no separation, separate, so there is not like a life, and there is no universal, there is not you and I as a separate entity there. So in a state of non-duality, there is no life begin and end. There is no universal begin and end. In a non-duality, nothing started, nothing will go into end. No birth, no death, as the Heart Sutra kind of uh, emphasizes. So in the state of Dharmakaya, 
nothing really begins, nothing really ends. But as soon as this ego, in a sense, the duality arises, that is the time where this life and the universe will begin. It's a very personal and individual. Thank you, Paul. It was a really good question.